Alright, today's video is going to be about fungi and fungus. Um, so here we go. The first objective that we're looking at today is what actually is a fungus? Well, a fungus is a eukaryotic cell, uh, first off, or they're made out of eukaryotic cells, which mean they have a nucleus to them. They're also going to be heterotrophic because they feed off of others. But they're heterotrophic in a way that isn't your typical heterotroph. They're not going to nom, 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 gobble them up. What they are is that they're decomposers, which means they're going to absorb their food through their actual bodies uh, themselves. Now, when we say bodies, we're not actually talking about like a human body or an animal body, but it's the parts that you see. Uh, it's really absorbing it through their cells. Uh, and the final thing that make fungi different from everything else, uh, one of their characteristics that make them stand out, is that they use spores to reproduce. Uh, which, remember, a spore is just a tiny little cell that can eventually become something bigger uh, and can grow into a new fungus. Uh, the actual cellular structure of a fungus themselves um, is a little bit different. Most of our fungi are unicellular. They come in the forms of like mushrooms, things that you can actually see growing out of the ground. But there is some of them that are unicellular, like yeast uh, is a unicellular fungus. Uh, we also have cell walls inside of the uh, fungi cells that make them more like plants, uh, which give them their kind of plant-like appearance uh, and allow them not to move. They are non-modal, uh, which means that they are not movable. They don't have legs. They aren't Goombas, so they're not going to walk across uh, the forest at all. Uh, and one of the more interesting parts is one of the other things that make up a fungus is known as hyphae, uh, which are branching thread-like uh, structures that are inside of the fungus uh, that make up our multicellular fungi. So when we look at our mushroom later on this week, we will see that when we rip it open, we'll see all the little filaments and all the little strings that make it look up. Uh, and make that, that make it up. Those are the hyphae. It almost looks like string cheese at times. Uh, now for our third objective here, we have a little labeling for our actual uh, mushroom itself. So I'll kind of put the picture in front of you so that you can kind of see uh, our different labels here. So we're first going to look at the side vision here, which we have uh, the very top things, the under part of the mushroom, uh, the top to it. Those are the gills. And coming off of the gills there that look like little rain droplets, those are spores. That's because the gills are responsible for the creation of the spores. Now down below there, uh, right here, this is where we have the stalk. This is going to be this part that represents the stem of a plant that's known as the stalk in a mushroom. We then have the two different ways that hyphae can occur. The first one is when it appears underneath the ground, and for our lessons we're just going to call those underground hyphae. They have an official name called mycelium, uh, but we'll, you'll talk about those later on in your science career. Now on the other side here, we have it pointing to the actual hyphae. That's when we call it when it's up above the ground there, uh, inside of the mushroom itself. And then the part that you actually see, the little uh, the mushroom topper, that is known as the cap, kind of like when you wear a cap on your head, uh, it's the cap that's on top of the mushroom there. Now the final thing is how the actual fungus gets its food. We mentioned that they get their food through absorbing it into their bodies and that they're heterotroph. The more complicated way of looking at it is that they absorb their food through their hyphae. So those little small branch-like things that go out everywhere, those branch-like things spread apart, and then they're actually going to absorb the food through those branches. And as those branches keep on going, more fungi are going to pop up as a result uh, of that. Now one of the ways that uh, we have mushrooms is that mushrooms are going to reproduce through different methods. One of the methods we already mentioned that make them unique, those are spores. Remember, spores are just tiny little cells that make up new organisms. The actual mushroom part that you see, and the mushroom part that we typically eat on things like pizza, or maybe you just saute them and put them on steaks, also very delicious, uh, is known as the fruiting body. This is just the reproductive structure of the actual mushroom itself. So that picture that we labeled there is actually a picture of what's called the fruiting body. Uh, now there's two, what, there's two methods that mushrooms are going to go about. Tip, much like we talked about with bacteria and with protists, uh, there are asexual and sexual ways of reproduction. The asexual reproductive method is called budding. 
this is where um, typically this is going to happen with like your yeast cells is that a small little yeast cell is going to grow out of the parent and then it starts off small but then it'll eventually grow into a full size uh, so it's basically like if you start growing a human off the side of your face and it develops into a big human uh, that's kind of what budding is um, so it creates an identical copy similar to the parent which all of the asexual methods of reproduction are going to be uh, creating an identical copy of itself uh, that goes for bacteria, that goes for protists, that goes for fungi. Um, the sexual reproductive method that doesn't have an official title to it. But what it is, is that you get two cells that are genetically uh, different to the parent, or you get cells that are genetically different from your parent. What you have is that you have two hyphae, and essentially they're going to grow into each other. But when they grow into each other, they're going to swap DNA, and then when that hyphae goes into creating the mushroom part or the fruiting body part, they're going to have DNA that is genetically a combination of one mushroom and the other mushroom. Um, so basically the hyphae are going to get tangled in together, and then they're going to create the actual mushroom. Um, and when they're tangled up with each other, they're just going to swap DNA back and forth. Now with fungi, with fungi, we have three groups that we can group them into. The first one is known as sac fungi. And these are given their name uh, because they have sac-like structures to them. When we look at them underneath the microscope, they have this long bag-like appearance. Um, and we'll see some microscope images in class later on too uh, of what these look like. Uh, we also have a club mushroom. These are like the mushrooms that you pick up at the store. They have they look like they got a club. They got a handle and the part that you would, you know, hit over somebody's head. That's a club. Uh, think of a golf club. It's got the it's got the handle and then it's got the the part where you hit the ball at the end of it. Uh, the club fungi represent that. They have the stalk and then they have the nice cap on top of it. And then finally we have our zygote fungi. Now these ones are probably the most dangerous because they create very resistant spores, meaning that too hot, too cold temperatures aren't going to bother them. These are the type of fungi that are going to infect your foods inside of the fridge um, because they, th their spores are very resistant, meaning that they can still survive inside the cold temperatures inside of your fridge. Now there are multiple different ways that fungi can actually help us or just affect us negatively. One of those ways uh, is through environmental recycling, which means decomposition. The reason why we're not walking on corpses in the forest is because the fungi get rid of all of them. They decompose that stuff. Um, when a tree falls in the woods, that tree doesn't stay there forever because fungi will grow on it and break that tree down. Uh, until there's nothing left, until you know it goes away. Um, there's certain ones that are known as disease fighters. Antibiotics can come from a fungus. Um, things like penicillin is actually from a fungus itself there. Uh, so we get antibiotics from that. There are also some that are disease causing. Um, ringworm is actually a fungal disease. Um, athlete's foot is another fungus disease. Um, so some of them can cause diseases. There's also the kind of relationship that a plant and a fungus both share together. The underground hyphae, or mycelium, help with the growth of plant roots. Since plant root fungi grow faster than plants, so the fungi hyphae, or mycelium, will attach themselves to the roots of trees and will help the trees gain more water. In exchange, the tree provides the fungus with some of the sugars that it's producing. So it's a win-win relationship. The fungi are getting food from the sugar that the plant produces, and the plant is getting water that the fungi is able to reach easier. So they help each other out. There's also uh, the common thing that I've been mentioning all along is food. We eat them as food. You know, put mushrooms on a pizza or blue cheese uh, dressing. We eat them as our food. Uh, and then finally, we have what's called a lichen, which a lichen, that's not the werewolf prior type. That is the, uh, it's, it's a fungus. And what it does is that these are usually the guys that come around when there are no other uh, species that can 
harvest or settle in an area. So before there are plants, typically there are lichen that make the ground suitable for the plants because they help decompose the things that are there and allow and return nutrients back to the soil. These nutrients can then support plant growth uh, from it. So there are your notes on fungi. Have a great weekend and I'll see you on Monday.